Good afternoon. Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. And of course, you got here just in time. That's right. It's Friday. It's time for another edition of Friday's Finds. This is going to be a cool one. I think we're only going to have one product. Because, uh, yeah, it's a... <laughs> Look at the size of this box. Wind tent reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to look at the stars? Would you like to gaze at the stars while you're laying in your tent? I said, well, of course. And so they sent me the stargazing tent. I did not realize it was going to be so big. Now you'll notice I'm at mom's. We're camped in the driveway at mom's. We're coming up on Christmas. The big thing is tomorrow, it's gonna get cold. They're talking wind gusts of 40, 50 miles an hour, and the temperature's gonna start out in the 40s, and in two hours, it's gonna be <laughs> in the teens. There's gonna be this like 50 degree plummet, but that's great for this because I want to put this tent through the paces. It says it's a four season tent, so we need to get it set up here and see what all this fantastic tent has to offer. So let's go to work. First thing we're gonna do is, is unbox. We're gonna open this up. It, it arrived yesterday, the big box. The UPS driver had to roll it up to the house on a two wheel dolly. He said it's heavy. According to the Amazon page for, for the stargazing tent, it weighs 80 pounds. I put it on the scale this morning. That box weighs 120 pounds. So I'm gonna open it up right there. So let's open her up and see what's inside. That's a bag of, bag of hardware. Whew. I'm pretty sure that the weight they're talking about on Amazon is just for this black bag, the, the tent. I don't think they factored in the hardware, but I don't know. Just guess it. By my calculations, I need approximately 30 square feet for this tent. And you'll, you'll see why.
little clamp on one end and a big clamp on the other. Big clamp goes on the big center pole. Got the bars in place. It's not so one of the, the, the thing that I learned is you've got a, a door and then you've got the panel. Okay. Now, now we got to do some guy wire. Pretty simple. So one thing that I think there should be, my personal opinion, I, I think they ought to have another tie point here that gets kind of kind of flexible. So what you what what we have is a half a bell tent that's been extended. So it's kind of a hybrid 
bell tent. Got a cord port. There are windows, so you can drop the sides, side windows down. And we have windows here. Here, let me open those up. take a look inside so full front ventilation so when you pitch your camp make sure that's pointed at the, the lake or something scenic uh, the starlight tent and, it, and it's called that because it's got the clear panels the starlight tent measures 15 by 16. That's 240 square feet of space. 240 square feet of really usable space because the, the walls are pretty high. Let me put that in perspective for you. 240 square feet. So the RV part of our motor home is 30 feet. That's 30 feet long. It's eight feet wide, not counting the slide. That's 240 square feet. So there's as much floor space in here. Actually, there's more <laughs> floor space in here than there is in here. Because we've got all the stuff in here. Whereas in here, we don't have the stuff yet. If we were, if we were pitching camp, we'd be putting several beds. This will sleep eight to 12 people or two people very comfortably. You can set this up out on your property and have a really cool getaway. So now we wait for some, some weather. When the wind is blowing, we'll come check it out. Ah, the cold front's blowing in. We're supposed to have 50 mile an hour winds. So we're gonna see how well the starlight tent holds up. And while I'm out here waiting for the temperature to drop, I'm gonna put a heater in place. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up the little buddy heater and, and see if we can get it outside wind chill is way lower than that oh it's it's really cold when the wind blows both buddy heaters going uh, I've, I've had them going about maybe five minutes and it's actually really getting getting tempered in it when i first got in here in the tent you could see my breath in five minutes that the heaters have been running it's warmed up enough that you can't see the, the breath now. Yeah, there's a reason they call these hot tents. And that's because the fabric is dense enough that you don't get air blowing through it. It's a little bit creaky up here though, right up here. At least this is where it's creaking. Two windows and the door do not have zippers on the bottom and I, and I understand that it, yeah you need to have airflow 
it's especially if you have a wood burning fireplace in here but anyway you, you get a little draft over here i have i have an indoor outdoor thermometer and it shows 64 degrees in here so this is the the what i have in my hand the temperature for this unit is 64 degrees and I've, I've had both heaters going for about 30 minutes now it's very it's very comfortable in here you know i've got with long underwear and the poncho and but when you walk in it's like dang it's hot in here but it's comfortable to be in here provided you're dressed now there's definitely a draft where air is coming in underneath those doors and flaps or the door and the, the window flaps but back over here in the back of the tent it's very comfortable considering it's 20 degrees outside this will be the last video clip for today because it's just getting dark look here 62 degrees and i brought out the big patio heater and it is way too much <laughs> it's putting out too much heat that's what I said. It's, it's putting out too much heat. It's it's uncomfortable, and that that hasn't caught up. But because just standing here, head high, this it's probably 70, 72 degrees. Of course, it's hot because I've got all these layers on. 63. You know, it actually feels warmer in here than it does in the motor home. I guess that's because the motor home has the full wall slide and so it's got a little more leakage. Whereas the only air coming in is through the draft point and it's exiting the vents up there. I like this tent. Man, it's cold. Still cold. About time for me to take the tent down. But before I do that, I wanted to give you my opinion, overall opinion on this. I know I, yes, yesterday when I was playing with the heaters, I said I really like this. I, I, I do like this tent. But there are a couple of things that could be better. But I just want you to be aware of this. You're watching this, so I'm just giving you my my two cents worth. There really needs to be something here, a, a tie down. So we need a tie down right here in the middle of this so that we can get this nice and tight because it pops. And that popping causes the stakes to work loose and see how this this guy wires is kind of coming loose it's because there's just so much flex in there because there's not enough tie down point there and while we're on the topic of oh i gotta get it gotta get out of the wind huh. while while we're on the topic These are better than the little bitty wire spikes, but in reality, for the, the ropes, the tie down ropes, you need big ones. Uh, I'm talking about the big, the big steel spikes that are 12 inches long, that'll go down in the ground and give you a good solid foundation. Because with this flapping in the wind, Here, I'll show you what happens. So when that's flapping in the wind, it's pulling these loose. See, that's not even tight anymore. Uh, 
the spikes need to be bigger so that you can get a good cinch down tight and hold that hold that really really secure I think so th these work great for staking down the bottom but when it comes to the the ropes we need bigger spikes and, and having having this this would be would be better if this was a socket since we've got the extendable if there was just a socket here to stick the pole in and hold that up and even cranking down on that as tight as I can get it it's still not quite tight enough those, those are the three things that I'd like to see improved upon other than that this is a really great tent. I, I like the hybrid design. I like the amount of space this provides. And you gotta have lots of shelter for lots of people, or you just need a big extra room. If you're living in full time in the RV and you need another room because your wife is driving you nuts, you got it right here. 240 square feet of space to get away. So that brings us to the end of this edition of Friday's Finds. It's the big top edition of Friday's Finds. It's a huge tent. <laughs> this tent is available on Amazon. Uh, I'll post a link in the card as well as in the description that will take you to the shopping list on the Dude RV Gear Recommendation Amazon Influencer account. And you can explore in further detail there. And you can actually watch the abbreviated videos I made for this tent on there as well. If this is your first visit to Dude RV and you enjoy this kind of content, I'd appreciate it if you'd click on that subscribe button. I do this on a, just a, on a regular basis. Friday's fine. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you. I sure do appreciate you. That's why I get to do what I do. And for my patrons, I am most honored. You guys rock! All right, y'all come back now, you hear?